Hello everyone. Let's discuss about the clinical trials and license agreements of the corona medications Remdesivir, Tocilizumab and Favipiravir. Now there are already plenty of misinformation and fake news circulating about this matter in the internet and I do not want to contribute to it. Hence I have done thorough research about today's video topic. I am also providing the link to the top medical journal that I have referred to in the description below. Uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of things spoken about doctors and hospitals in this regard. There are in fact few people who are telling that doctors are responsible for the rise in the COVID cases. Uh, there is nothing that me or any other doctor can do about uh, these people who are talking without any basis or rationale. Uh, I just want to play uh, this video, uh, these words of Sadhguruji, which really keeps me motivated and keep going. What other people say it doesn't matter, but you should not be ashamed of what you have done, isn't it so? Hello? This much you must keep, this much pride and freedom you must keep in your life. It doesn't matter, the whole world says you are wrong, but you are not ashamed of what you have done. That much you must always keep in your life. If that one thing, if you give up, I'm telling you, you will live a very poor life. You may have everything, but you will have nothing. Before getting into the drugs, you must understand that virus can be divided into an RNA viruses and DNA viruses. Now, Corona being a RNA virus requires an enzyme called as RNA polymerase for RNA synthesis and hence its multiplication. Now the drug Remdesivir is a RNA polymerase inhibitor. It was originally developed in 2009 to act against hepatitis C virus. Later it was tested for Ebola virus disease and Marburg virus disease. However, it was not so effective against all these things. Now in 2009, uh, it was created and developed against Hepatitis C by a company called as Gilead Sciences. Gilead Sciences is an American biopharmaceutical company headquartered in California. As this drug was previously tested against uh, the above mentioned diseases, it had already undergone phase 0, phase 1, phase 2 trial and for Corona specifically, it had to again undergo only phase 3 trial. So let's see this phase 3 trial. Now the first stage of the adaptive COVID-19 treatment trial that is ACTT1 compared the effects of Remdesivir against placebo in the treatment of COVID-19 patients having symptoms of lower respiratory tract infection. Mind you, the patients who were symptomatic were tested and not the asymptomatic patients. Now I mentioned the word placebo. Now what's a placebo? A placebo is a substance or treatment that is known to have no effect at all. So basically, the effect of Remdesivir in symptomatic corona patients were tested. Let's see about the details of the trial. This study is published in one of the top medical journals in the whole world, that is the New England Journal of Medicine, NEGM. I am providing uh, the link to the article in the description so that anyone of you, if interested, can uh, go through the article. Enrollment for ACTT1 began on 21st of February 2020 and lasted till 19th of April 2020. The study was conducted worldwide so that uh, patients from different ethnicity are included in the study. It was conducted in 73 sites as you can see uh, including countries like United States, UK, Denmark, Spain, Japan etc. Only patients who were having symptoms of lower respiratory tract infection were included. It was a randomized double-blind placebo control study. Now let's try to understand each of these words. Randomized means total number of patients who are recruited for the study are randomly divided into two groups. One group receiving Remdesivir and another group receiving placebo. Now double-blind means all the patients as well as the treating doctor do not know who are the patients who are receiving Remdesivir, who are the patients who are receiving placebo. Now this is done to eliminate any psychological effects and hence the bias out of it. Now only those people who are analyzing the results know whether the effect is because of Remdesivir or not. A total of 1063 patients were randomly divided into a Remdesivir group or a placebo group. The average age of the patients recruited for the study was about 59 years. 
this is a very important factor and a very good thing about the study because the disease is known to be more severe in elderly patients now the remdesivir group received 200 mg of remdesivir intravenously on day 1 followed by 100 mg of remdesivir every day for next 9 days while the placebo group received a matching placebo every day now just to remind you neither the patients nor the doctor knew who are the patients who are receiving remdesivir and who are receiving placebo of course all the patients received equal quality of supportive care like antipyretics or oxygen or ventilator support if required the trial protocol was approved by institutional review board at each site and was overseen by an independent data and safety monitoring unit full details of the study design conduct oversight analysis all these things are available online at nigm.org all patients were assessed every day their clinical details their improvement or deterioration these things were noted and results were available for 538 remdesivir group patients and 521 placebo group patients the results are as follows on an average the group of patients who received remdesivir took 11 days for recovery while the group of patients who received placebo required 15 days for recovery and on an average at about 14 days 7% of patients who received remdesivir died while 11.9% of patients who received placebo died now you may ask you have been hearing the death rate of about 2% why are we having such high death rates here that is because this study included only the symptomatic covid-19 patients while the majority of covid infected patients are asymptomatic who do not require any treatment anyway serious adverse events were also lower in the remdesivir group that is about 114 forming 21% of the group uh, compared to 141 that is forming about 27% of the placebo group even respiratory failures were lower in the remdesivir group that is 28 compared to 42 in the placebo group now apart from this there were also other measures like primary outcome and secondary outcome but let's not get into the details of those and and i do not want to confuse you with so many information this whole thing was supervised by the national institute for allergy and infectious diseases now this is the flow chart describing all the steps in detail you can as well take uh, the screenshot of this if you want now seeing the beneficial effects of remdesivir it was decided to prematurely unblind uh, the patients and give remdesivir to those patients in the placebo group who were deteriorating and the results were also made public so that uh, the drug can be made available as early as possible it's important to note that the effect of remdesivir was in those patients requiring oxygen support and serving the need because asymptomatic patients do not require any treatment anyway and this was again compared with a similar randomized study done in china involving 237 patients that also showed similar results while this is a preliminary report further follow up and final reports are awaited but seeing the beneficial effects us fda has approved its use in the treatment of admitted symptomatic covid-19 patients requiring oxygen support however as we can see still there is a significant mortality in those patients receiving remdesivir hence antiviral drug alone cannot be a solution to our current problem that is why other drugs like tocilizumab have also been tested well let's talk about its testing in our next video the company which manufactured remdesivir that is gilead sciences has signed a non exclusive voluntary licensing agreement with uh, generic pharmaceutical companies based in Egypt, India and Pakistan to expand the production of this remdesivir to provide supply to 127 lower and middle income countries the companies which come under the agreement are these under the licensing agreements these companies receive a right to have technology transfer from the gilead sciences to increase the production of remdesivir now these companies are also free to set their own pricing and will not depend on gilead sciences to set the prices and now a very important thing here is that this license agreement is going to be royalty free till the who announces the end of this public health emergency that is the end of pandemic now what does this mean 
generally when a company like glad sciences uh, signs an agreement it will ask for a royalty sum from these companies for a fixed number of years to regain their trial expense and of course to incur their profit now as this is a pandemic these companies need not provide any royalty sum to glad sciences hence the drug will be available at a lesser cost but once the who announces the end of pandemic or if there is any other better alternative drug available or if the vaccine becomes available these terms of the contract end and after that these companies need to provide the royalty sum to glad sciences for fixed number of years that in turn will increase the cost of remdesivir currently remdesivir is available at about 3000 rupees per vial while the other drug tocilizumab about which we shall discuss in our next video is available at a much higher rate that is around 30000 per vial because of its effect in symptomatic especially sick patients there were a lot of direct buying of these drugs from people who could afford it leading to increase in the demand and black marketing but now luckily the production has also increased substantially and the prices also brought in the control as per the report a maharashtra government has placed an order for 60000 vials of remdesivir while in karnataka a part of the jubilant life sciences that is uh, nanjanpur pharmaceutical was uh, supposed to start the production of remdesivir in mysore to sum up today's discussion whenever a new drug needs to be launched it has to undergo different phases of extensive clinical trial involving phase 0 1 2 3 and 4 4 is after it becomes available in the market now as remdesivir was, was already uh, tried for other indications it had already cleared phase 0 1 and 2 and for covid it have it only had to clear phase 3 of the trial the second point is remdesivir showed promising results in a study involving large population of relevant patients now by relevant i mean those patients who were actually symptomatic and elderly patients the third point is thanks to who gilead sciences has signed a royalty free agreement with a lot of companies hence making the availability of remdesivir possible at a reasonable cost Let's be hopeful about its results on sick patients, and let's hope for a better outcome. And uh, about another drug that is tocilizumab, let's discuss about it in our next video. Till then, take care, stay safe, bye bye.